All right. Okay. So this is the point when we we have to show what we deal with when cars come to us for tuning sessions. Most of the times it's a relatively easy job. And to be fair, those people who build their own systems with without guides guiding, uh, they bring a better sounding system to us so we have an easy job to tune it. Mm. Having said that, this is another car that was installed by so-called professionals, right? Am I correct by that? It was a shop. Uh, the owner is here with us in the background. Um, this is a beautiful RS6 with a OEM plus, well, an OEM, OEM style upgrade. Uh, we have the freeway upgraded with uh, Fokker KRX 3 set, mid base in the factory ported enclosures, mids over there, tweeters on the dash. And is it the factory sub or you, you swap the driver in the factory. factory sub at the back? But it's all amplified with decent amplification, Helix Ultra DSP, all the fancy things to make this car sing. And I was hoping to have a quick job on it because with the Helix I can tune quick, however. We found big issues in this car. What the tweeter measures and what the mid range measures, that that really doesn't matter right now. But I could see from the measurements and even um, just by listening to the system that the mid-base was, was just not right. Even the owner was expecting better mid-base performance and he was thinking that maybe it's not happening because the amplifier is not sufficient, right? That was your first thinking. Well, the reason why we don't have mid-base in the car is because this is left side base so the Fokker KRX3 mid base in the ported enclosure. It doesn't play anything below 120, 30. It has a massive peak, but it, it I mean, it's like extra 10, 15 dB peak at around 170 on left. And on the right, look at that at 200 Hertz. It's so loud that it breaks my voice. And driver's side doesn't even play anything below 160. And we were just like, you know, even if the Fokker needs a lot of airspace and it's now in a ported enclosure, which is not necessarily suitable for the driver, surely it should play below 160 and there's no base at all underneath. So we were like, okay, maybe now we have several mid-base drivers here. We can pull out another set, drop it in the enclosures and see what they, they are going to play like because we had an A7 here with us for, for a tuning session a few months ago and actually the mid bass was so punchy it was so good it, it was for a, for a door application well later we figured out it was a ported box um that had a lot to give a lot of punch and it worked so we were like okay let's take the door card off and there you go this is where the, the nightmare comes so they mounted that mid bass on a super thin mdf that's flimsy on its own by default anyway but why isn't it not playing bass is look at that there's a five eight mil gap look you can see the coil inside that's the second core that's exactly yeah it's tuned to 200 hertz it <laughs> that's why it's not playing bass i mean come on it do they have to go back to primary school to understand physics a little bit better that you have to seal a fucking box? Come on. And that's the point when, when I'm losing it as well because that's not what we want to see from any shop, let alone not even a hobby person wouldn't do anything like this. Why don't they care more? And if you now recognize yourself, if you build this, then shame on you. Honestly, you do this to anyone, let alone to the person who used to work in the industry, who trusts you the, and, and you know you should do a good install this is not the matter of whether you had enough time for it or not or whether you had the supplies you didn't, could, couldn't use a plexi if it had to be thin or anything for clearance of the door card no it's just shit work it's bodging right now I've, I've lost it a bit but that's it they deserve to hear it we are not going to mention names i'm sure you watch this video because many people watch our videos this is not what we should be dealing with we are happy to reach you in any system if, if shops can't deal with that. Because yes, tuning takes a lot of experience and that's, that's just fine. But that, you were not doing this 20, 30 years ago, were you? You were not cutting corners like this. And that's just sad. So guys, again, like what I mentioned in a previous video, 
if even if you trust the shop, they give you all the all the Shazam on, on social media that they, they do such a good job. Always ask for pictures how they installed it. Maybe from this angle, it looks good. It looks like it was installed well. Maybe. Not from that angle. And and I, I promise as soon as we take the other door card off, it's gonna be the same as 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 this because the measurement shows it. This driver doesn't play any bass. It doesn't play much lower than the four inch mid-range. What's the point? So yeah, now we have to save this, rip it apart, and then mount the driver properly because this is just wrong. Wire something into a reasonable standard. Mm. And yeah, at the back, we, we can't complain about anything, but here, this is just super low effort. Like, this self-tapping screw should have been lined up with the plastic of the enclosure, and that screw is just in free air. Look. That's why this, this section doesn't hold that thing. And that's what it's worth actually, you know, nothing. And here as well, there's nothing holding it. Look, mid base installation is at its best. When I shared the, the French van, some guys told me that, oh, this is not even that bad. And I'm like, what cars did you get then? Yeah. Maybe something like this. So we have also realized that these drivers actually can never really fit <clears throat> within this space if you want to have clearance from the door card. And that's another reason why they didn't even have ceiling against this converter plate. On the other side, at least the gap is not that big. There is a gap, I can see that. But there was a gap between the driver and the plate as well because the magnet is actually hitting the back of the box. And even if you screw it against this plate, yeah, it can't go deep enough because it hits the limit. So you actually need a different driver that's shallower, um, which is probably better also because this Fokker needs a lot of airspace. And this box is probably like three liter. It's tiny with a really long port that goes all the way back in a really shallow plastic box. So there's not much airspace. Um, and that's the opposite that needs the whole airspace of a door all the airspace on the planet. So let's reveal this. Does it look circular to you guys? Hmm, good, isn't it? So this is what we came up with at the end. It's a 10 mil ABS and we also made the driver countersunk so we have less to worry about when it comes to clearance, but I also lined it up with the grill of the door card. Once we put it on them, you will see that it's pretty in line with the cutout of the door card. That's not a port, that's just access to one of those bolts in case the whole box has to come off. Um, but yeah, this is, this is solid. And then gasket at the back, this gets bolted through. Happy days. This side is already fitted, as you can see. M4 bolts going through with nuts and washers behind it, pulled, you know, right against the, the plastic enclosure. So it's as rigid as it can be with the gasket, which also seals the speaker, OEM speaker cable that goes in. It was done the very same way by factory as well. Um, even if there's a tiny bit of leakage, there's nothing to worry about. Not like before with a huge gap. This is, this is now rock solid. It, it's, it's not going to move. And because we didn't have clearance with the 4K mid base, we ended up using this beauty. Most people don't even know this driver. This is also new to us, but the specs look good for enclosures. Um, it's quite a decent sized coil with a neo magnet. It's an oversized six and a half. It's more like 7.23 inch. It's 178 mil. But yeah, it's, it's now it's flush completely. So it should sit in, but we have to drum all the head of the bolt down because it was really close to get it in perfectly because now it's pretty tight because of the bolt but it will just go in nicely and then let's hope for the best it will measure well too so the driver is in door card is on and it lines up perfectly and we have clearance 
So that's 10 mil away from the original enclosure and we still have space. And once this grill comes in, you can see that once it clips in, it's a good 10 mil away from the driver. So it gives plenty of clearance for excursion. So we should be just fine once it clips back on. Here we go. Let's measure it. Just to recap again, I, I've just shown the results to the owner, but we want to record this. So this was left base previously with the Focal, with the pool installation. Uh, it was speaking crazily and not playing anything on the 150-ish, 130. And then we got this. Yeah, exactly where we want it to play low, down to like a good 45 hertz. Well, to the target line, this could be like a 40, 40 hertz target line, pretty much. Um, and in the cabin, it's good up to 200-ish, then we have acoustical issues here the functional up to 350 and then huge issues why i never suggest mid base down that low in the door with, in two-way configuration with the tweeter because when you have a tweeter starting to play from like two three kilohertz what do you do with this anything in between fair enough the focal had more mid-range um and these stack drivers are dedicated kick base drivers for a two-way wideband setup so they play the low really well they're not meant to play the mid-range well, and they certainly don't, so I can hear it and I can measure it. So that was left, and then the right base before with the Focal, huge peaky, again, no base whatsoever down here, where you would need the kick base. And then, there you go, bam, magic. Well, this is not magic, is it? Mm -mm. There's, there's no magic in this, it's just, you have to seal that bloody driver. Basics. So our driver side rolls off, or there's a bit of a dip here around 60 hertz. Um, but then it's still okay down to 45. Same way, up to 350, it's functional. There's a bit of a, a suck out here. We will see what we can do, do with that. But again, above 350, it's unfunctional for mid-range. But we don't even need that. We have dedicated mid-range in the car, so we will be fine. We can definitely pull a system together from this now. When, when we want to finish this video, this is that point and we want to talk something because uh, we are definitely in a different mood we can say that right after we listen to the system after the retune and well you got to say something about it it's mega it's it's how it should have been to start with um you know it's uh it needed it needed the 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 effort on the tuning let alone anything else but you just you just mentioned to me that you know the system first started with what with the jr fix whatever it fix was 86 yeah and then so mid base and uh, the mid base and mid was running semi active or what was running semi active biamped, biamped. Mm. with with the what well, the crossover with the crossover yeah oh my yeah. god can you imagine how good it was yeah it it, it you know it was uh it was an experiment that didn't work at all, that's for sure. Um, There's a guy in the US who puts a lot of effort into putting out the message that tuning and using the right kit can take you so far. And actually, he shared a post on Stereo Integrity, which is one of the biggest sound quality forums on Facebook mm -hmm. the other day. And he shared a post that he doesn't understand why people who want an OEM upgrade Maybe we could, they could even keep the factory speakers and they could do magic if they use something like the, the Helix V8 that I just mentioned to you as well. They could literally replace your Ultra DSP with your amplification. It would run everything in the system just like the way it works right now. And nobody would notice a difference mm. unless you want a really crazy loud and, and basic system where you need a lot of headroom. Um, but yeah, with, with Helix kit, when you have... All the features, and, and I use quite a lot of Zepco as well, they can do all these features, fully parametric EQ, um, and they sound good too, then the tune is is the key. Mm, mm, 100%. Because considering the mid-range is low, where you sit, the stage is not that low. It comes up pretty high mm. once all the drivers are in time and in phase. And even from sitting from here, from passenger side, actually I'm hearing the mid-range from the tweeter. 
from the top of the dash mm. from here. Yes, it's a bit one-sided. I don't have staging, but it's really pleasant to sit here mm. and listen to music. So I'm sure even your wife is going to notice a difference. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> nah. Well, mm. when something sounds good, anyone can tell that. Mm. There is that. Yeah, there is that. Yeah, no, you're right. It's, it, it, you know, it's been a revelation. You know, it's really changed. But, you know... There's there's heavy queuing there and people may look at it now. There you go, I show it to you. You can't take anything away from this. Now you think Pete is doing crazy 6 dB peaks. You have no idea what's happening here because mm. it's just so extreme. Yet, it works. It does. It works. And once the system is pulled together, once we were at Euros a few years ago and some of the guys heard the you know the reputation of my my Honda and they came over because they wanted to listen to it and two of those guys were uh, several times European champions in expert class where installation means even more than anything those guys are crazy when it comes to installation and they sat in the car they listened to it and they just didn't understand many things like how can it be so dynamic parking mode on so they didn't understand how the system was so dynamic controlled and they started to ask all the questions oh well, what amplifier do you have I'm like well if you don't know then i'll let you guess mm. and they went through all the most expensive stuff like you know symphony genesis brex I'm like no 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 so what do you have I'm like just zap call <laughs> modified like, no standard huh they didn't get it because for them everything has to be modified in order mm. to that's that, that's their way to Improve a system, you know. And then, oh, what DSP do you have? I'm like, well, at the time I had a Helix DSP Pro Mark One, Quite old now, like five, six-year-old DSP. Modified? No. <laughs> Again, surprise faces. I could see where it was going. They were looking for those magical solutions. Mm. And then after the demo, I asked them, you know, what do you think, how much EQ work I have on this system? Oh, I, I think it's it sounds so natural that I don't think you have much EQ on it. <laughs> and I looked at him, I'm like, mate, I have more than 150 bands on the system, on the Freebay Plus sub. And actually, I ran out of EQs on my mid-range. 30 bands wasn't enough on each channel. Mm -hmm. And they were confused. They were like, what? I'm like, yes, this system is not just that I use many bands, it's EQ to death. Mm -hmm. Like, badly, crazily. But when you use the EQ at the right places, you know how to measure what technique to use, how to set up the, the mic, calibration files, all the settings to see the right reading, then you can use that reading. You, you actually apply all your changes on the right picture. But if, if you measure wrong, you base everything on a false picture. And then after yeah. that, everything is crude. And then time alignment. How do you get the the speakers in time to play together? How can you confirm that that they actually play together? And all these little things can take you very close, yet miles away. Mm. If you screw one thing up, and then when you screw three or four things up, it escalates. Mm. So, yeah, tuning is is fun, and equally a never ending uphill slope for people when they think oh i'm nearly there then poof, there's another drop but then they see that there's an even bigger slope going up um and that's the point when i just say if you are in uk come to me because this will be the biggest upgrade that you can ever have in your system and yeah definitely no question it, yeah i actually when when i finished tuning this i listened to a few songs and i was like i really felt proud because what this system started with now this is something that I would be happy to show to people that okay we have door rattles, that's something that can look that look that later, but considering using factory locations, freeway up front, the differential rear field, factory subwoofer in the back, I don't even know what size it is, maybe an eight inch in a ported box. No, it's a six. Six something tiny, but it it, it holds pretty well with the system. Wow, you have decent power behind it, mm -hmm. that possibly does the trick. But um, this system is finally singing. And we were checking the bass driver. That's why I didn't even put the grill on yet. To see how much it moves in that tiny little ported box. And we were checking it at loud levels and they hardly move, you know, one or two mil. 
Yeah, at most. It's yeah. quite surprising, and yet you get so much output. So I have no idea where they tuned it. I should have actually measured the port itself to see where it peaks. But we had this in response with the base drivers while well, I showed the measurements earlier. But, you know, um, the base on its own, it was actually crossed at 50 to 250. And it rolls off a bit sooner at the bottom end and it looks pretty rigid. rigid. What was the word? Was ragged. It? Ragged, that's the word. Sorry. Sometimes my brain doesn't work, especially after such a long day. It's been a long day. Um, and system is playing down to 27-ish pretty well. Uh, yeah, it has weird stuff happening, but it's not that noticeable. And again, this is factory sub, factory locations, factory applications like factory ported box at the back, factory ported box at the front, but it's finally working together. It's not the most linear system I ever tuned, but it works together finally. It's making music. And it's definitely. So whether it's linear, it's it's playing music. It's playing together as a system now. Doing it properly, you know, it's it, it's giving you the sound stage. It's giving you, um, you know, a smooth, open vocal, very well defined. Mm. Um, all the instruments are well placed, um, and you know, the sub is not dragging back particularly. No. Um, you know, there's no. It's part of the playing. system now as a system as opposed yeah. to a bunch of components all fighting each other considering that you know you heard two cars this morning you heard the mercedes which is unfinished but that's like that would be like a 30 day mm. install you could hear that you heard the honda that would be a good 70 80 day mm. install and they did what they did they also gave you a picture about okay this is also possible but how much labor, how much money, how much time? And that's why I feel proud of this system because this is a pretty effective mm. system. I think if I if I had to get to this stage without deadening or anything, just throw the speakers in, set up the amplifiers at the back, rewire everything, this would be still probably like a good three, four day job. Yeah. But what you get out of it within that limited time it's actually pretty impressive. Mm. Very much so, yeah. As opposed to those cars that you mentioned. and Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's punching well above its weight. Right now, yeah. You know, definitely. But that's the problem now. You had few uh, options in this car from other people, other shops, and where, where was it going? Well, the answer to that is it wasn't going anywhere because I either did it myself, which I don't have the time for. Wow, you try to play or, with a tune. Yeah, um, but, but it, in and and this is coming from a standpoint where I, I do understand a parametric equalizer. I use them a lot, doing what I do. Um, but when it comes to using a piece of equipment you're not familiar with um, and measuring in a way that you're perhaps not familiar with. Um, car environment requires a completely different yeah, way of a, measurement you yeah, know, it's, than home. It's changed significantly since I was doing this, you know, 20 odd years ago. Um, and even from the, from the high end aspect, um, you know, the SQ cars we built back in the day were really good, but they didn't have the benefit of DSP to the level that we've got here. Yep. Um, and using DSP properly, um, I know from the home cinemas that I do works. It, it's the it's the right way forward, yeah. and in a car, it's even more highlighted. Um, so, I think you know you you can't you can't um, you can't get the experience of setting up something like this without having done a lot of them, yeah. and without understanding completely the kit that you're working with um and i think that's what's come out of today and and i was the, the, you know the, the the reason i called peter in the first place was because i knew that i wasn't going to be able to give it the time i needed to give it to get it to the the, the place that i thought it could go um but, and what's happened today is we've exceeded yep. that expectation and there's a thing you could possibly spend two weeks with this car 
and sorry, but you wouldn't get to this stage. No, I agree with you totally. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That, that's that's what that, I'm saying. Yeah, there's, just... a, there's a difference between someone who does it on a daily yeah, basis. Exactly. Because it's like, even my mechanic told me off the other day, I took the car in there to change the brake disc and pads on it. And they looked at me because they know exactly what I do. Like, Pete, why are we doing this for you? But I'm like, guys, yeah, I, yeah, fine, I could do it. Mm. But you do it on a daily basis. You, you knock it out in one hour. I pay you for that. I appreciate your work. I support your business. I don't have to deal with that. Mm. I agree. Because you are better at that. You are the mechanic. I do what I do. You do yeah. what you do. And it's a way more effective way of keeping the whole economy in a nice cycle. Everyone supports yeah. everyone. Um, yeah, understandably, some people want to do everything themselves, but without knowing the reference, what they could have, they don't even know what they are chasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty Definitely. much where we where we leave this here. Yes, we started this video pretty upset. I was. Uh, I calmed down because at least now we managed to change this car completely. And yes, the, the main point is that you are now in a good position. I'm a happy man. Exactly. And we can forget the past, what happened with this system. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. again, guys, if you go to anyone, you, you get your system installed by anyone, get those bloody pictures and videos. Come on, really. Demand it. They can take a few pictures or videos how they installed it because what we found here could have been found from the pictures or the updates. It doesn't take much. And... Then, you know, if, if, if you see that something wasn't done properly and then you also hear the result that it's just not working, it doesn't play bass. And that Fokker driver, that can play shitloads of bass. Mm -hmm. I heard those drivers well installed in cars and they, they have crazy punch and kick. They can go silly loud. They can rip doors like they have so much output. And in this car, they did nothing. Mm -hmm. And it would have been still nice to keep them to see what they could have worked like in these ported enclosures, but there wasn't enough clearance for them. Yeah. They, they couldn't be literally fitted. And I don't even understand how they didn't realize that. They, they just thought, okay, you know, we got this job, we charge it, and then we watch it. <laughs> like, I, I don't see, you know, what's, what's wrong with calling the customer that, hello, actually, sorry, this is not gonna work. We can't fit this driver. And then you would say, okay, what can you do? Mm. Can mm. you fit another driver that would fit? Sure, we look into it, we try, and we do. That would be the right way of dealing with it. Like today, I'm like, okay, we have a few options. We pull something off the shelf, we check the specs, check the clearance, done. But it, I didn't, it's just, that's, that's why I was so upset because all these things are, are basic common sense things. It's not magical science yeah. like building something like i mentioned the insignia or the honda that that takes a lot more but this is basics mm. Mm. and then after that if they can't you no problem i can help with that if someone brings me a car that's fully functional and well installed easy we would have been done by two three o'clock in the afternoon yeah yeah and now it's what time is it quarter ten to, to ten. Ten. Mm. ten to ten so we leave at ten o'clock in the evening yep Yay. Yep. At least tomorrow I won't have a similar day. <laughs> you hope. No, we, we are working on the Suzu. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing else coming. Cool. This is where we leave this video. Hopefully it was helpful for some of you guys and you managed to watch it all the way and you managed to listen to our boring chitty chat. Um, I know some people do and they still learn a lot from it. There's always something that people can learn from from the contents I share, I hope, well, some say. <laughs> and, you know, you find your way to get good sound in your car. Hopefully you liked it, feel free to share it, comment, do the usual things, and I see you in the next one. Take care.